Okay, now I look for the eigenvalue lambda equals 1. So I'm looking for solution, non-trivial solutions to the system a minus 1 uh, lambda i x equals 0. But with lambda being 1, I'm just looking at a minus i x is 0. So as before, I'm going to let x be my unknowns, x1, x2, x3. The augmented matrix I get for this, I'm going to be subtracting one of the diagonal. So negative 18, negative 3, negative 9, 0, negative 3, 0, 30, 6, 15. And it's a homogeneous system, so it's a column of zeros there. Divide the top row by negative 18, 1, 1 sixth, 1 half, 0. I'll go ahead and divide this by negative 3 to get the 1 there. And I've got 30, 6, 15, 0. 1, 1 sixth, 1 half, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0. Multiply by negative 30 and add. And then I can multiply by negative 1 sixth and add. And I get my reduced row echelon form. Bring that out of the matrix. I got x1 plus a half x3 is 0. I have x2 equals 0 and 0 equals 0. So once again, I get one free variable. X, uh, x, excuse me, x3 is free. Okay, so from x1 plus a half x3 is 0. I get x1 is negative 1 half x3, and x2 is 0. So I put that together, and I get, for my, un, or my solution, x1, x2, x3, I get minus a half x3, uh, 0, x3. I factor out the x3, and I get negative 1 half, 0, 1. So this is an eigenvector. I can take any non-zero multiple of that and still get an eigenvector. And so if I let x3 be 2, I can get the eigenvector negative 1, 0, 2. So from lambda equals negative 2, I get negative 1, 5, 0. And I get negative 3, 0, 5. And you can go ahead and check. When you multiply the matrix A times each of these vectors, you end up just getting negative 2 times each of those vectors. These are clearly linearly independent. Non-zero entry here, but zero entry here. And the same thing happens down here. I'm going to add this guy into the mix. Because he's for uh, lambda equals 1. negative 1, 0, 2. And you can check. If you take a times this vector, you're going to just get this vector back. So it's fixed, actually, under that transformation. And how do I know when I put him in there that they're all going to be linearly independent? Well, eigenvectors that correspond to different eigenvalues are linearly independent. That's the big theorem we proved by induction last week. So these three vectors, then, will form a basis for our three. Okay, so this is my basis of eigenvectors. I want to use that now to diagonalize the matrix A. So remember how this goes. I'm going to let M be the matrix where I take each column and make that an eigenvector. There's two ways to understand what's going to happen next. First off, um, let me call this vector x1, 
this vector x2, this vector x3. So I can write m uh, in block form as x1, x2, x3. So if I take a times the matrix m, I know from block multiplication I'm going to get a x1, a x2, a x3. In other words, the first column of the product is a times the first column of m and so on. But a x1 is going to be what? This is an eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda is negative 2. That means that ax1 is just going to be negative 2x1. This guy was also an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals negative 2, so that's going to be negative 2x2. This guy was an eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals 1, so that's just going to give me 1x3. Now I can use block multiplication again. Call this x1, x2, x3 times a diagonal matrix, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. So in the ith row, I've got the eigenvalue corresponding to the eigenvector in the ith column of this matrix. That just gives me the matrix M again times the diagonal matrix D. So this is what I'm calling D. So I get A times M is M times D. So to diagonalize M, I'm going to multiply um, both sides by M inverse. So if A times M equals M times D, that's the same as saying M times D equals A times M. So D then equals M inverse AM. So you can check the diagonal matrix negative 2, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, 1 is in fact equal to M inverse, which was the matrix we had. M is the matrix formed by the eigenvectors. times our original matrix A times that, that uh, matrix M again. So that's how we've diagonalized the matrix A. Now I encourage you to think about this from a transformation point of view and think about A being a representation of the, of the transformation T from R3 to R3 given by T of X is A times X. A is the matrix representation in terms of the standard basis E1, E2, E3. M is a change of basis matrix. It's a change of ma basis matrix. Um, a is a representation of a transformation, and then A uh, M inverse is another change of basis matrix. That means that D is a matrix representation of the same linear transformation. But with respect to what basis, that's what I want you to think about. Anyway, that'll do it for quiz 16.